welcome to this episode of Married to Medicine. So, um, out of the gate, I'm going to get into it. Quad and Heavenly, um, we don't have that little conversation, um, and they write, um, Everybody is mad at Mariah and it ain't nothing Toya can do to stop people from being mad at Mariah because no matter what you do, Mariah is going to do something else to have somebody else mad at it. But so you're going to have to let this situation run its course. But later on in the show, Dr. Jackie does come up with the idea to have a, uh, like a forgiveness uh, ceremony. And I think that's good. That's what the group needs to do. Cause this is the, the basically the, talk and discussion the discussion that they need to put everything out on the table with Mariah. This is important for this entire show because like I told y'all in my last review um, Mariah is the one who created the show. This show is supposed to be her baby. And um, it's, it's to me it's weird with her not being on the show but I don't I can watch the show without her being on it at the same time. But anyway, let's get into Dr. Simone and Dr. Heavenly going down here to this voodoo office. Y'all, let me tell you, they got so many different ty- types of voodoo. I didn't even know they had, even had this kind of, this many uh, different types of voodoo, honey. So, what my my understanding, so it's the Haitian voodoo, the bad voodoo. I don't know, but I felt like I needed my red pepper and salt mixed together just to walk up in this place so I can go on and be sprinkling around me in a circle so that I didn't want nothing to even just rub off on me. And I'm like, Heavenly, I done went praying up in there and I'd have been praying when we come up out of there but now i think what dr simone had in mind was was some healing like um on queen sugar you know how she does the healing on queen sugar that's what i think um that dr simone had in mind i Heavenly took it as somebody coming up here dressed in all black with chicken feet and stuff in their hand coming there putting a the hex on people. That's not what Dr. Simone was trying to do. However, I feel the same way. Don't be bringing no bad m- mumbo jumbo mojo fojo with you up into our space of godliness. I kind of agree with that. And then when they presented to the group, the group felt the same way. I I felt the same way. I ain't for no voodoo. She better leave that stuff where she found it. Ain't nobody was, wasn't nobody even feeling that. But anyway, they get on, <laughs> they go to their little crawfish uh, bowl. Y'all just get Jack and some corn on the cob and some potatoes out of this crawfish. Y'all should went somewhere where they put the potatoes and the shrimp in there. Feed, feed her that part. Cause I'm like, I'm not about to be cracking no head off no crop, uh, sucking no crawfish, no matter how X-ray that you try to make it, I'm not about to be eating this crawfish. My mom and them used to eat it, and they can keep eating it because it's not for your girl. It's not for Chanel. Not at all. Not going to be eating it. Not about to happen. But anyway, I'm glad that the girls was finally having a good time and that they had um the little dance out because they needed that to break the ice. Now, who, y'all tell me, who already knew that Mariah was about to go on and beat her with this dance? <laughs> dance off but Mariah did that go on Mariah you know you wanted to twerk more than what you did but the alcohol was going to your head when you been over <laughs> but you you got that y'all should have gave her some 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 Mardi Gras beads one other thing about the voodoo thing I don't like how Heavenly was just like F you Simone or how she started that my thing is if you say F you to Heavenly first, she ready to fight and she ready to go on off. I don't feel like Heavenly that need to be Heavenly answer to everything. F you, F you. When she get mad, she do get combative and she ready to fight. But she stay doing stuff to people and making them mad and they don't behave the way she be behaving. I'm just kind of, you know what I'm saying? Heavenly, you need to chill with that. Like, it's the way to communicate and the way to talk without just having to act a fool about it and be a ninja about it every time you don't agree. Mariah said something real important. You don't let anybody pray for you. I'll never forget growing up. My mother and my grandmother would always say, people like, I'm going to pray for you. And they'd be like, uh, thank you, but I'm good. You, you don't let everybody pray for you because you don't know what kind of connection everybody has with God. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to understand how to explain this to y'all. You don't know what kind of hatred or how people pray. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to pray for me and be like, Lord, please let her make it 
just let her make it today. No. I need to be all over well. You want to, you don't want up with somebody to be praying and they think you're doing you some good and, and how they pray their way of praying uh, only as good as they pray only good for three months and you drop dead after that. No, you don't want anybody praying for you because you don't know how they pray, what they pray or their connection to God. But anyway, um, so they get on down to this uh, forgiveness ceremony. And everybody pretty much well trying to forgive uh, Mariah for everything that they've done. And Heavenly brought the, the important part to the surface. Because we've seen it on every season. Mariah, when they've tried to apologize and move forward. And Mariah does the same thing. She wants to talk about what everybody else has done but she does she and she but she doesn't want to have ownership for the things she done in order for any of them to move on so they can get over it they have she has to accept ownership for the things she's she's for everything that she's done um you know everybody else is over there accepting ownership like Heavenly says she's sorry for everything that she said about her mom and how she was wrong for saying it and all this kind of stuff. She's deeply um, sorry and she's sincerely sorry for it. And, Mar and Mariah accepts her apology and she apologizes, but she doesn't never apologize. She needs to sincerely acknowledge what she did, like Heavenly acknowledge what she did and apologize. That's what Mariah needs to do. And she needs to acknowledge what she did and say, I'm sorry, exactly like that, that she's sorry for exactly what she did. She has to acknowledge it. But anyway, I'm like Dr. Helen. Dr. Helen it has been calling it tonight. Quiet, it's been five years, honey, about the homeless statement. It Get over it. Like Dr. Jackie said, here she is. She done fought one of the people that's done fought for her life twice. Done lost her ability to have kids. Y'all can have kids. Y'all we being mad for petty stuff not talking to your husbands, mad at your husbands, y'all not being friends, quad you not talking to Mariah over some childish stuff and it's really done and over with. How long you gonna hold hold the grudge? Like Heavenly said, it's wearing you thin and it is because it ain't even that serious at this point for y'all not to even be talking. It's really some petty BS. Get over it. It, it, it's a known fact for you to hold the grudge. It takes off of your life. But every time you, you get mad and angry, even this goes for Dr. Heavenly too. For every time you get mad and angry, it takes off your life. Every time you holding grudges, you trying to be bitter. You trying to get back at somebody. You trying to be petty. You trying to be mean. Everybody in the world, it takes off of your life. So, quiet, get over and let it go. It's done. I mean, if she apologizes and she acknowledged what she did, take that apology. You apologize for what you done. Take that apology. What the, what 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 is it that the Bible says? Once somebody apologizes, it's on you. Need I say any more about that situation? Get on back up to Atlanta, y'all. You know we always say kids is off limits. Doctor Heavenly. Just because that little girl want to sing don't mean she need to sing. Just because you got money to spend on don't need, mean you need to spend money on. That little girl is not ready for no mu the music industry. The child is no singer or no writer. <coughs> She's a very smart and intelligent child. Um, I don't know. Just because you live in Atlanta don't mean she needs a singing career like everybody else does. I mean, she's a beautiful little girl. But I don't know what other hobby she needs because I don't, you know, but maybe you should start off with a singing for the Lord and sing at, singing at church and grow from there. Maybe we need to see her there first and growing from some hymnals or something. Then we'll, we'll, we'll work on her songwriting and everything else because, um, see, so, and Dr. Simone, this kind of irritated me. Dr. Simone won't, uh, gonna put it out there to Cecil, like, she want him to take the initiative to set up their, uh, marriage counseling sessions. Dr. Simone, so this is why, why you want to do him like that? You know doggone well everything they do is, is based on your schedule. You want to be petty and say something like, well, you take the initiative setting up your golf trips and stuff. Simone, that's because that's on his schedule. He knows his schedule and he knows pretty much well how his friends do. Now, you know everything in y'all relationship based on your schedule, your work schedule. That's how it's always been. 
and and that's how it is. Why you want to go do some mess like that and say some mess like that? See, that's you. I see right now this this is gonna be a fifty fifty street with with um Doctor Simone and Cecil because that just I mean. Don't set him, stop setting him up to fail. It ain't nothing that's and I if y'all go back and look at some of my other reviews, they're on the old channel. This is the new channel. The old channel, I done told y'all before, that's for my beauty, lifestyle, and all that kind of stuff. And I moved the reviews over to this channel, but the old reviews are still over there for the first two or three shows of this season. Y'all need to go back and look at them because I because I don't want to sit here and say everything I've said in one of those because it's too much. But just go back and watch it. But Dr. Simone, is her what's going on in her relationship is not that serious. She making it be that serious. You messing up your marriage for nothing because you want to be petty. Now, like I said before, I get it and I understand that it's hard being with a person. Everybody else glorify him. He think he he this perfect person, but behind closed doors, he 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 put you through things. And he got an attitude. Dr. Simone, that's everybody marriage. Hell, that's my marriage. My husband is a sweetheart, but he's sweeter in, to other people than he is for me. When we get home, he'll MF for some time behind closed doors. He can be hell on damn wheels, but then in front of everybody else, he wants to be perfect. He don't want you want nobody know ne nothing negative about him, nothing about his mood swings, mood changes. That's every man. That's every re relationship. That's just like outside of uh when you are. Uh, when you out in the public, everybody don't know exactly how you are. You different behind closed doors too. Stop setting this man up for, uh, to fail and stop making stuff be like it don't need to be. Like real talk. Cut it out. Like it's, 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 t quit it. I feel like you trying to make it be more than what it is just because Jackie on the ass with her husband. You need to be on the ass with yours and all of that. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Produ uh, production encourage y'all for the drama of what but honey don't sacrifice your marriage for some ratings and for this show don't do it like my my number one example and honestly in the interview is is kirk and rashida you you kirk trying to go out for producers and you see what happened today marriage y'all come on quit it we got mariah and her mom back again mariah wants to be um more open and received by the ladies, but Heavenly done told her what she has to do to be more open and more received. I don't know what more can you say to Mariah to get her to comprehend Mariah on what you have done so y'all can get over it and move past it so they can receive y'all and the group won't be so standoffish and they gonna be standoffish for a while because you've been so back, backstabbing before. Anyway, here her mom go again. The same old, same old. They, they, they just haters, or either they jealous, or they intimidated. It's this very thing right here that's got the whole got had morale running around acting a fool anyway, and carrying on why she don't burn all of these bridges because her mama was feeding her all this in her head. And I told y'all this. I told y'all this last season. I'm telling y'all this this season. I've told y'all this early episodes. Her mama fed her, had her head all gassed up, thinking everybody was jealous of her and she was better than everybody else. And now it's like Mariah seeing she ain't better than everybody else. It ain't, they don't care about none of that. But I am glad to see that Mariah was, was telling her, her mama, no mama, that's not it. Is really not it. And I'm glad she was getting her together about her, her, her and her friends too. Way to go, Mariah. That right there, I feel like shows me growth with Mariah. That Mariah, she does get it. And that this time around, that she will do better. I can't say Mariah going to be perfect, but I feel like this time around, it's going to be better because now she ain't listening to that and she ain't buying into everything that her mama was feeding and she ain't going to be carrying on as bad as she was before. And I think she going to do better this time. But anyway... Um, I do think she see that her mama just steered her in the wrong direction before. But now getting on to Quad and Dr. Gregory. Quad did like she always do. She got all the stuff he needed for her office. She always do for him. And they have a balanced relationship. Why don't they see that? He does for her and in return she does for him. That's what a relationship is supposed to do. He pay all the bills. He pay all this. But yet and still, she still holds him down. She has 
has his back, he wouldn't be making all that money without quad debt or run around and be his personal assistant because really that's what she is. She's a paid And he pays assistant. her by making the house payment or whatever. She says she make her own car payment, but you pay light gas and water, maybe a credit card bill for shopping here or there or whatever she don't pay. But it ain't like she don't earn it. So anyway, she sit down and try to talk to this man I don't even understand. You can't say nothing to Dr. Gregory, honey. That man fly out the handle and he does get combative. He don't listen to nothing Kwai got to say. And I understand what Kwai is trying to say. What Kwai is saying, well, we call it bedside manner. She wants him to have the same care and bedside manner with her as he has with his patients. And he don't have it at home. When he come home, she gets stuffy, rude, be mean, uh, Dr. Greg, not uh, the nice, sweet person. She wants to know that person. She wants that person at home. And then when she trying to hear, ask her something, when she trying to really break it down and explain it to him, he just gets mad and start doing all this screaming and hollering, talking about, I'm going all off. I'm, I'm getting angry. That you doing that because you don't want to hear anything. All he wants to hear is, how good he is and whatever. He don't want to hear that he's done wrong or, or doing wrong about nothing. He don't want to hear that. Just like she was going to try to sit, explain to him the situation and she wrote it down a while ago. I'm going to write it to you. I write stuff down. I done wrote so many letters to my husband over the 23 years we get together. I, and and y'all women that's watching this, tell me how many times y'all done wrote a letter to y'all husband or to y'all boyfriend when he hurt you. Explaining deep down inside how you felt. Especially why you in your feelings because a lot of time us women that's what we do we we get out that pencil and paper give me some pencil and paper let me get a pad we get that pad out we get the right we get the right them 12 page letters i'm sending you a 12 page letter and i closed it with the kiss honey we'll write a 12 page letter and maybe a 24-page letter if we hurt and our heart broken. So he need to listen. And that's they, one of their problems in their relationship. He going to have to listen. He don't want to. He feel like all she do is tell him what he don't do right. And that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that she is not feeling loved and she how many times can she say she not feeling loved because somebody pay a bill does not mean that you love because somebody pay a house payment it don't mean that that you you should feel love love comes on a deeper level or more intimate level and i know how quiet feel because it's like 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 i said i've been with my husband 23 years and we've been through this within our relationship where I didn't feel love. Like, he go to work. He come home. He half-ass kiss you. You like, how was your day? It was good. But you talk generally about where it's nothing intimate. It's nothing deep going on. Everything is just like a robotic movement. And you just like his little slave. You done cook dinner, clean the house. And all he has is a list of stuff for you to do. Because my husband used to do that. He had to have it. He didn't care what I had to do. What I had to go on, if I had to work, none of that was important. All he cared about is what he needed done and a list of stuff to do. He would come in the house. He would never notice that the walls and baseboards had been cleaned. All he would notice was what had been done. Like, I may not have loaded the dishwasher, but he didn't say, oh, those baseboards look good. Oh, um, them walls is clean. Oh, those windows, I can see straight through. Look like we don't have windows. They so clean. He didn't notice none of that. All he cared about what I had done and what he needed me to do. So we was at that point like quad and and dr greg is at that point where you just feel used you feel abused and you you care about that person you love that person so instead of quitting and getting divorced and and giving up you trying to talk to that person and say to that person look here i want to feel loved I'm not feeling love. And you want to sit down and talk to them about this on a deeper level. And you want them to understand and feel where you're coming from. But instead, you get him flying all off big, combative, baby space. He said, well, what the hell you want from me? Because that's what my husband used to say to me. When I tried to talk to him, he was basically like, what the hell you want from me? I do. I go to work every day. I pay the bills. And this, what Dr. Greg is saying to her is the same thing my husband said to me. And I had to walk away. Like, I didn't leave him, but I had to stop doing. 
I had to find myself my own place. I had to start my own business, my own career. I had to make myself unavailable, less available. I had to get a life and start living a life because I was going to have a nervous breakdown and it was going to result in divorce. It was that bad. I was miserable. Like, I couldn't hardly stand to be near him, around him, look at him. I didn't want him to touch me. And it's like, that's the, that's what quiet is going through. That's the point she has reached. And that, but she doesn't want it, want to be in that place. That's why she's trying to talk to him. But he ain't hearing it. He don't want to listen to nothing. Because in his mind, as long as he's working every day and being faithful and and taking care of home there's nothing wrong and men don't understand it sometimes it's a little bit more than the financial part it's you need to have int intimacy you need to connect on an emotional level you need to have the love there in order for the relationship to be fulfilling i mean i can go so deep into this this is a whole nother video on its own outside of this show that i can get so down deep into this but anyway I hope they work it out and he hears her. And I just feel like it's going to be on the level that my husband and I was in. Like, I was leaving. I started, and I ain't going to lie, I started looking for my own place. I didn't want to divorce him. I loved him. I didn't want nobody else. I didn't want to be with nobody else. But I had to have my own peace of mind. And I was to the point where I was just going to find my own place and be by myself. And I think that's what Quad is going to be pushed to do because he keeps pushing and sometimes you have to show a person that you with them because you love them. You're not dependent on them to make it because sometimes men get lost in the fact that they think you're dependent on them to make it. Like you have to have them to make it. You with a person in quiet situation, I feel like she's with him because she loves him. I feel like she's like a cat. She can land on her feet and make it even if she had to minimize, downsize, or do whatever that she could make it and she she could survive because I feel like she's a survivor. She's from where I'm from. I know we like cats when we land on our feet. And I feel like he, he she going to have to let him see how much she does for him. Plain and simple. So that's all of this episode, you guys. I will see y'all in the next show review. And again, if you want to see anything concerning lifestyle, DIYs, hauls, any of my hair braiding, hair techniques, any of that kind of stuff, you will have to subscribe to All Things Nail. All of my show reviews are now on All Things Nail things nail to that's t-o-o -O. if you look down in the description there's a link to both channels be sure to um subscribe to whichever channel that you like i appreciate you i pre pre appreciate all my old fans and i appreciate all my new subscribers hugs loves and kisses and blessings i hope y'all have a good week and I will see y'all again in the next show review or the next haul or DIY <coughs> or braided style, excuse me, whichever one. And I hope you all have a good night.